Changes are taking place at a phenomenal rate in Malmö, Sweden's third largest city. The city is developing through bold initiatives, through knowledge and endeavour, by the young, within commerce, in city organisations, among the individual inhabitants of Malmö. The changes in Malmö are taking place step by step in phases. The city underwent the first phase up until approximately the year 2000. New large projects were completed, for example, the Öresunds Bridge, the fixed link between Malmö and Copenhagen. A new building project was established in Vestraham, the Western Harbour, creating an enormous amount of interest. Improvements were carried out on the most vital parts of the city centre. The squares and streets were given new aesthetic value. Everyone in the city became aware of these positive trends. The people of Malmö were beginning to feel a new emotion, a sense of pride in their city. In the second phase, from 2001 onwards, the drive forwards were sufficient to tackle important questions concerning the future, both long-term and in a sustainable way, such as, for example, the further development of the city. Within the urban environment area, target-oriented efforts were directed on new city districts. Some examples of the projects within the second phase include a university under construction with places for 20,000 people, extensive investments in the infrastructure, a railway tunnel running beneath Malmö and increased regional public transport, the growing population increasing by 5,000 new arrivals each year, investments in new construction of homes and office buildings, new arenas being built to house large events, ice hockey, concerts, a new football stadium. The new construction site, Vestraham, has been the subject of discussions for a long time, even outside the borders of the country, already before the city's new landmark was completed. The 200-metre-high turning torso, only finished in 2005, is considered to be the foremost residential construction in the world. This area, Vestraham, is an ecologically sustainable district with locally produced renewable energy sources. Energy is produced here in a variety of ways. Wind energy is taken care of only a short distance away. Solar energy is dealt with via the installations located on the buildings. Here, solar panels supply the heat and solar cells produce the electricity. Biogas is produced from the household waste. The summer heat is stored in an aquifer system, a natural reservoir situated in the bedrock, and then pumped up into the heating system during the winter. During the summer, the cold, which is stored during the winter months, is used to cool the buildings. The buildings are designed with low energy consumption in mind. The area has been adapted for cycle and pedestrian purposes. The possibilities of using collective traffic are excellent, and the buses are fueled using natural gas and biogas. Everything to minimize the dependency on cars. Malmo's goal is to reduce its carbon dioxide emissions by 25% by the year 2012. The objective is to go even further than the target set for the nation as a whole. The final stages of one of the largest offshore wind farms in the world is now completed. 48 wind turbines generate electricity sufficient enough for 60,000 households in Malmö. Here in Malmö is the largest solar cell installation in Scandinavia. When it concerns investments in solar energy, Malmö has come furthest in Sweden. A large proportion of the country's solar energy is produced in Malmö. From the solar panel installations at Augustum Boy and Helena Holm, heat is produced for the district heating network. 
Solar heat is also used for heating the open-air bathing pools in Malma. The prize-winning solar cell installation at Melanhead School produces the electricity that is used in the building. Here, the solar cells also function to screen the sun in order to avoid excessively high temperatures. The installation also plays an educational role in the school. The pupils are constantly reminded about the important issues concerning energy. The installation at the Technical Museum has even greater educational value. Here, the general public is given the opportunity of acquiring further knowledge about solar energy. The Malma-based company Cockhams, which develops Stirling engines for submarines, has also developed a 25 kilowatt Stirling engine which, together with a parabolic mirror, is used for solar energy applications. The mirror focuses the solar rays onto the Stirling engine where energy in the form of heat is converted into electrical energy. This is an experimental construction in the USA. The system has been developed for worldwide usage but particularly in warmer countries where the sun's rays are more direct. Under construction here at Sega Park is an educational centre for supplying further information about various forms of renewable energy sources. Here materials for object lessons will be formed, seminars will be held and study groups and school classes will be able to come here. Within the entire Sega Park area there are extensive plans for creating renewable energy. A solar heating installation is under construction. The next stage will be a bioenergy plant and a smaller wind farm. Malmo is focusing on investments in solar energy installations that are well integrated within the city environment. The intention is that they should be visible to the general public so as to create a positive response. As a result of Malma's efforts concerning solar energy, Solar City Malma was formed. This is a non-profit organization aiming to strengthen the understanding of solar energy and contribute to the increased use of locally generated solar power within the Malma region. Through seminars, study tours and training, activities are focused on getting municipalities and property owners, amongst others, to invest more in solar energy and to strengthen the skills of installers and consultants. Many of the activities are also focused on students and house owners. The aim is for the Malmo region to continue being the leading solar energy centre in Scandinavia, as well as being a good example for others. In schools in the district of Bunkerflo, a unique project has been going on for the last eight years to stimulate children in physical activities. All the pupils have physical activities included in their daily timetables. This is arranged in cooperation between the school, local sports club and research workers and is intended to form the basis towards a healthier lifestyle. Also contributing towards good health, a comfortable indoor climate and a secure working environment. These can be created in conjunction with an efficient energy consumption by means of modern technology and computer control and the technology surpasses the individual for the good of the individual. What then is the reason for Malma's strong development? Knowledge and competence? Yes. The creativity and driving force of many people? Yes, certainly. A strong environmental awareness? Definitely. Its international image? Absolutely. But the most important reason is because Malma is characterised by being a youthful city, both in its heart and in its soul. <laughs>